Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday. Welcome to Zion. Welcome to 10 at 10. My name's Phil Strong, and it's once again a privilege to be with you in your home this morning as you gather with Zion to worship God. You know, we say that church is not a building, church is not a meeting, church is not something that's scheduled necessarily at 10 a.m. But in fact, church is where we gather with another and we bring Jesus into the midst of what we're doing. So this morning as we gather, I'd really like to encourage you to put this time aside, really to centre your focus on Jesus. Um, right now, while you're watching this at home, if all things go to plan, then in the building, uh, those that are able to gather will be gathering together and they'll be worshipping Jesus. What we'd like to do as we begin is we'd like to begin with scripture. And this morning, I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 12 uh, in the New Living Translation. Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the Old Covenant is read, the same veil covers their minds, so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can only be removed by believing in Christ. Yes, today, even when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil, and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Amen. Well, this morning as we read that scripture, I'd like to say to you, some of us have had the veil removed. Look, we do need to wear masks to keep safe. It's one of the recommendations. But let us not be limited in how we see God and how we reflect God. Because as Paul writes in the scripture, those of us that have received Christ have had the veil removed from our heart and we're able to reflect the glory of God to those around us. Come on, church. That's our calling, to reflect the love of Jesus Christ to our community. Uh, Lord, as we gather, wherever we are, at home, at, at the church, uh, even in the community as we listen to this, God, we pray that your love would shine bright in our hearts, that we would reflect your glory to the world. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and there's liberty for those who are captives and those that are in darkness. So, Lord, we pray, may your light shine in Te Amuru, in Waipa, and in New Zealand. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, um, I just have a quick announcement to make. Uh, if you can see me uh, here, you won't see me in the building. And that's because uh, my family and I are away this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, last week, my dad uh, passed away. He had had a struggle with cancer for several years. And just recently, uh, it got in places where they couldn't operate. And so he went to be with Jesus on Tuesday. So we're celebrating his life this weekend. Uh, we're celebrating the fact that he is with his Savior. Uh, but of course, we're sad uh, because he's no longer with us. And uh, what I've been saying is I've been sharing this people is I lost my mate this week. And uh, so if you could keep our family in prayers, we're also traveling to be with another uh, family that's very close to us who also lost their dad. Uh, so a big week for us. So please keep the strong family in your prayers, and I appreciate that very, very much. As you know, when we gather, we love to sing. Music is a beautiful gift that God's given us, uh, and we can use those songs that we sing because they're prayers on our lips. And I want to invite you in to what's happening in the building today so that you can have those songs as part of your worship experience. May these songs be prayers on your lips. And we'll make sure that the links are down in the comments below. Uh, but one of the songs they're singing right now is a song by Brandon Lake and called We Praise You. And it's a really upbeat song. But what I love about the lyrics of that song is it says this, praise is the weapon that silences the enemy. So you can use praise songs to shut the enemy down if he's accusing you, if he's distracting you, if he's tormenting you, if he's tempting you. Praise is a weapon that silences the enemy. So make sure you play that song loud 
in your house or in your car, wherever you are. The other two songs that they're going to sing at the end of the service today, at the end of the gathering in the building, is the first one by Red Rocks Worship called Breathe Miracles. It's a beautiful new song, and it's a song really about inviting us into that place where we would see God uh, do miraculous things in our lives. So I encourage you to play that. And finally, uh, a song from Hillsong, uh, Young and Free, Hillsong Young and Free, called Lord Send Revival. It's an acoustic version of the song, Lord Send Revival, Lord Send It Now. Move with your spirit, be with us now. So uh, we pray that those songs would really be a blessing to you. And again, I said the, the links will be down in the description for you to enjoy. One of the other announcements I'd like to bring to you today, just to keep you uh, aware of what's happening, uh, is that next Sunday, Sunday the 5th of December, uh, all things going to plan, uh, we're going to have a party for Zion Kids. If you're part of Zion Kids, then you want to plug in to the party to celebrate the end of the year. And so what I'd encourage you to do is to go and look at the Zion Kids Facebook page. That way, you're going to be able to know what's happening, what the time is, what the location is, what the arrangements are. You can make sure you're part of that. We just really want to honour kids. And by uh, honouring the kids, we're really celebrating family, aren't we? Uh, so check that out. It's going to be fun. And uh, that's Sunday, the 5th of December, Zion Kids. Uh, as school ends, we've obviously got a lot of kids doing exams. Uh, we've got a lot of kids transitioning out of school. And, uh, you know, with the work that we do in schools, I'm really mindful that uh, school principals, school boards, and teachers are under a lot of pressure. So one of the things they're going to do in the building is what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to pray for teachers. So let's do that together. Lord, we lift up the principals, the school boards and the teachers that are under a lot of pressure at the end of the year and also as they plan for next year. Really just want to pray peace over the school environment that as children come onto a school grounds, it'll be a place where they are surrounded by peace. Uh, Lord, they would not be under anxiety, they would not be under pressure, they would not be under conflict, but Lord, they'd find peace in the classroom. Lord, we pray uh, wisdom for school principals and boards as they make decisions around how to lead their school into 2022 and beyond. Really just also pray favour on those ones that are doing exams. May you quicken their mind to remember what they've learned. May you inspire them with divine wisdom. May you give them the diligence to study and to do well in their exams, that they would go well into next year and what they're doing in their studies. So I really just want to commit all those at school and university to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, look, I really hope you're enjoying this environment here with uh, 10 at 10. It's just our way of trying to, 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 to incorporate you, those of you that are doing Zion at home, uh, we're trying to incorporate you with what's happening in the building. Uh, but if there's any way we can support you, look, uh, just understand that under lockdown, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's changing. Uh, next week, we obviously see traffic light system come in, and that's really uh, going to be interesting to see how we how we evolve in that. Uh, but look, let not the traffic lights or the uncertainty stop you or block you from being connected with Zion. If there's anything we can do to support you, uh, we are free to minister one to each other. So if you would like a visit, if you'd like someone to pray with you, if you'd like someone to share a burden, uh, then please reach out. The best way to do that is to contact the church office. And uh, quite simply, uh, you can pick up the phone. Uh, we'll put the number on the a screen here for you to dial the office. Uh, or you can email. And again, that email address will come across the screen because we have the technology to do that. But just let the office know that you'd love to have someone support you and why. And we'll make sure that the appropriate person reaches out to you. Uh, so if you want some help, ask for help and let us know how we can be in contact with you. Hey, well, as I wind this to a close, I just really want to do two things. I want to point you to Jesus and I want to point you to the scriptures. Uh, so the first thing is, as you will know, you'll see shortly, uh, if you're watching online, is that we love to share testimonies as a family that point to Jesus. We believe that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, according to Revelation 19. What that means is when we testify about what Jesus has done, point to his goodness in our life, it's proclamation of faith that we want to see Jesus do it again. So my question for you is, what's Jesus doing in your world? How is Jesus uh, bringing his goodness into your life? And maybe you could put a comment down in, underneath the video below. Just whenever you're watching this, just go, you know what? I want to give testimony to the goodness of Jesus. 
type a comment in the comments below or reach out to someone and share with them. Because, you know, when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, faith rises not just in you, but in other people. So I encourage you to share testimonies about what Jesus is doing. What are the good things that he's doing that, that help you to see and experience the goodness of Jesus in your world? Point others to him by doing that. All right. Finally, I want to point you to the Word of God. Uh, I've asked the team today to, to have a look at Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the soils. So whether you're watching it today or whether you're watching later on, you may want to flick your Bible open to Matthew chapter 13. What I'd love for you to do is to read the story. There's a parable in there that Jesus explains about how the kingdom of God works. I want you to look at the four soils. You, you might be really familiar with the story, but I believe that Jesus is going to speak something fresh to you today. In fact, I'm declaring it in faith that fresh revelation is going to come from the scriptures. We're in a series called Embracing Holiness. And the Lord really challenged me to put Matthew 13 on the list for the topics that we discuss under Embracing Holiness. And so I was preparing myself to do my study and see what the Holy Spirit wanted to reveal. <laughs> but I'm not here this week, so someone else gets to do that. And so I'm excited that you would be invited into the conversation around the parable of the soils and how that helps us to embrace the holiness that God's got for us. So as I close, I just want to declare God's blessing on you. I want to declare the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, on your home and your workplace and your family. May you know the love of God who truly sees you as a precious, precious gift. And may you experience his love even more. God bless you, church, and I look forward to being with you again soon.